Hi everyone, my name is Valerie. Welcome to the owner's class video for the Singer Fashion Mate Model 3333 sewing machine. In this video, we're going to go over some great stuff like threading a needle, winding a bobbin, selecting a stitch, and a whole bunch more to get you started. In your box, you get obviously your machine, but you also get some cool stuff like this instruction manual full of some really great information. And for those who are really impatient, we also have this handy dandy quick start guide full of lots of great pictures to follow to get you started. Let's take a tour of the machine. This is the machine. So to get it working, first we need to plug it in. So you've got your power cord and foot pedal that you will plug into the side of your machine. And right above that is your off on switch. You'll know the machine is on when the lights come on. So up here we have our hand wheel which has arrows on it that show that you always need to turn it towards you. And as I turn it, you'll see a take-up lever pop up. And that's really important when we start threading the machine. Down here, we have the stitch selector dial, and above that, the stitch length dial. Up on the top, we have the bobbin winding stopper, the bobbin winding spindle, and a bobbin winding tension disc over here. This is the tension dial. Back here, we have a threading guide and another guide. Here's that take-up lever again. Down here we have the reverse lever. This is so you can sew in reverse. Down here we have the needle, obviously. The all-purpose foot, which you'll use for most of your sewing. In the back we have a presser foot lifter. It's up when you thread, down when you start to sew. Your bobbin is right here along with the cover. And you can remove this piece to expose a free arm, which is great when you're sewing like cuffs, pant hems, anything circular. If you turn this around, it's got a door. And we have all of these extra accessories inside, such as extra bobbins, spool caps, um, and presser feet. And so before we thread the machine, let's look at some of these extra presser feet. In total, this machine comes with four presser feet. Now the all-purpose foot comes already attached to the machine and that one you'll use for most of your sewing. You also get a buttonhole foot which makes buttonholes and this foot is the long white foot with the red marks on it. You also get a button sewing foot which is used to sew buttons onto your projects using the zigzag stitch and that foot is the transparent one with like the little blue feet sticking out of the front. And lastly you get a zipper foot commonly used for inserting zippers, but you can also use it for making and inserting piping. Now let's thread the machine. When we thread the machine, first we're going to wind a bobbin. So we're going to get the bobbin out of the machine. Raise your presser foot lifter to raise your presser foot and move this little black button to the right. And this pops your clear view cover. Take that off and retrieve your bobbin. Now this is a class 15 transparent bobbin. So if you want to go get more bobbins from the store, make sure they are a class 15 transparent bobbin. Using a wrong bobbin is like using the wrong part in your car. It's going to give you problems. So to start winding our bobbin, first get some thread and put that thread on the spool pin and cap that off with the spool pin cap. Now on the top of the machine we have two sets of diagrams, one in gray, one in pink, and for bobbin winding we're going to follow the pink diagram. So number one, put the thread through this little guide. Check. Second, we are going to wrap it around the bobbin winding tension disc. And when you wrap it around, really make sure it gets in there for proper winding. So you might even want to floss it a little bit, like you're flossing your teeth. Next, we're going to bring it across to this other set of diagrams, which shows how to thread the bobbin and put it on the bobbin winding spindle. So first, we have our thread and we have holes on the top and bottom. It doesn't matter which one, but go from the inside of the bobbin up through the top and grab the little tail. Now, put the bobbin on the bobbin winding spindle and you'll hear it click into place. Make sure it clicks into place because if you start winding and it's not all the way on there, the thread will wrap around the spindle itself and it's just kind of a pain to get off. So now that it's on, we are going to follow number five, move it to the right. That engages the bobbin winding mode. So now while holding that tail, press on your foot control and start winding it until you can bury that tail. All right, 
it looks like it's buried. So now I'm going to take my scissors and cut off this tail and make sure that it cuts off flush with the top of the bobbin. Then we can continue winding. And when the bobbin is full, or you've just decided that that's all the thread you need, move it back to the left and pull it off. Cut the thread, and now it's time to put it into the machine. Before you put the bobbin into the bobbin case, make sure the thread is coming off of the bobbin in a counterclockwise motion. Or to make it easy, when you have a little tail coming off, it will look like the letter P. P for perfect sewing. So we're going to put the bobbin into the bobbin case, and on your Clearview cover, you have a little diagram showing you how to thread it. So we are going to put our finger lightly on the top of the bobbin to hold it into place. And we're going to bring the thread under this little gray guide with an arrow. We're going to bring it up and around this black piece, back down, and across this little thread trimmer. Now put your Clearview cover back on, and you're good to go on your bobbin. Now we're going to thread the top. If you just wound a bobbin, the top of your machine probably looks like this. So before we thread it, let's get this thread off of the bobbin winding tension disc, and we'll follow the gray threading diagrams this time. So our thread's already in number one, great. Now we'll bring the thread to the number two and put it in between these two metal pieces. And we're gonna follow the arrow, we're gonna come down, three, keep going down, four, we're gonna make this U-turn, and we're gonna go back up, we're going to get to the take-up lever at number five, so we're going to come around this piece and let the thread come up to the eye. Bring the thread back down by number six and tuck it behind this little metal piece. It's actually a guide, so bring the thread behind that. There is another guide right above the needle. And next we will use the built-in needle threader. And before we use it, let's make sure the needle's in the highest position. So move the hand wheel towards you and watch it move. And right as it begins to come back down, that's how you know it's in the highest spot. So now we're good to use the built-in needle threader. It has a little white lever piece right here that you're going to push down. So we're gonna bring it down a little bit, wrap the thread under this hook bit, and wrap it over. Bring the built-in needle threader all the way down so that these prongs encompass the needle. Now put the thread in between those prongs. Keep holding the thread to give it a little bit of tension and let go of the needle threader and it will form this little loop in the back. Pull that loop and your needle's threaded. Bring it under the presser foot and we're ready to sew. But first, let's take another look at that needle threader. When you use the built-in needle threader, push down on this white piece and bring the thread under the metal hook and over. When you push the needle thread all the way down, it has some prongs that encompass the needle. Put your thread in between those two prongs. Keep holding your thread to give it some slight tension and release the built-in needle threader, and a little loop will form in the back. Pull this loop and bring the thread under the presser foot. Now your needle is threaded. Now the bobbin thread is already seated and ready to go, so we can sew. All right, before we start sewing, we need to select our stitch, and we'll do that with our stitch selector dial. And when we select a stitch, you'll know that it's on the right area when you feel it click into place, and it will line up with this little bump above the dial. Now, I wanna sew just a basic straight stitch, so I'm going to keep it right here but I see three colors, gray, blue, and red. So how do I know which one I'm sewing? Well, up above that's the stitch length dial. So we've got gray for gray stitches, blue, and red. And you just move the dial. Here's the gray, blue S1 for blue stitches, red S2 for the red stitches. But I want that gray stitch, so I'm gonna move it back. And in the gray zone, we have numbers. The smaller number is for a shorter stitch length, the larger number is for a longer stitch length. But I'm gonna have it at about two and a half, and that's pretty standard for most sewing on most fabrics. So now we're ready to test and make sure we threaded our machine properly. When you test to see if you threaded the machine properly, I recommend using some scrap fabric when you do this and not start with your project. 
So on this machine, we don't have to pick up the bobbin thread before we start sewing, which is a, an added bonus. We are going to put the fabric under the presser foot and it was up in park while we were threading the machine, but now we're going to bring it down in drive because we're about to drive this bad boy. Press down on the foot control and sew a few stitches. Now you want to turn the hand wheel so that the needle is back in the highest position. Lift your presser foot lifter and pull the fabric out and there's a little thread trimmer on the side that you can use. So here it looks good on the top and it looks great on the back. So good news, our machine is threaded properly. However, if it looks like this on the bottom with a lot of loops, then I recommend re-threading the machine. Most of the time it just means that your machine isn't threaded properly. Uh, you can also check your quick start guide and manual for more information. Now we're ready to sew our project. Our machine is already set up to sew a seam. So we're going to start with our new fabric and we have some guides on the needle plate and they have some markings on them to designate the seam allowance width, like 3 8 5 8 1 inch. A lot of projects use 5 8 seam allowance, so I'm going to line my fabric up with that line and I'm going to bring the presser foot lifter down and sew a few stitches forward. Turn the hand wheel towards me to bring the needle in the highest position and now I'm going to sew in reverse to lock the stitch in place. So I'm going to push the reverse lever and hold it. Sew back a few stitches. I'm going to release the lever and continue sewing. Now when I sew, I'm not pushing the fabric, I'm not pulling the fabric from the back, I'm just guiding it so the edge lines up with my seam guide. Okay, I'm at the end. I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me again, just to get up to the edge. Now I want to lock this in place as well, so I'm going to push down on the reverse lever and sew backwards a few stitches. And I'm going to release the reverse lever and sew a few stitches again. Turn the hand wheel towards me so that the needle is again up in the highest position. Lift your presser foot. Trim the thread. And we have a finished seam. The reason that I did the reverse at the beginning and the end is to lock the seam in place. That way our project doesn't unravel as we work. Now let's see how to do some decorative stitches. So to select a decorative stitch, I'm going to come back to my stitch selector dial and I'm going to line it up with this one right here because it's got three pretty cool designs. I have in gray a multi-step zigzag, in blue a honeycomb stitch, and in red a feather stitch. So we're going to go over doing each of these stitches. For the multi-step zigzag stitch, I'm going to come up to my stitch length dial in the gray zone. And I was at about two and a half for straight stitch sewing, and just for funsies, let's put it on number two and see how that looks. Okay, put the fabric under the presser foot, bring the presser foot down. Oh, actually I should probably start back here. Then turn the hand wheel so that the needle's in the highest position. Lift the presser foot lifter and pull out the fabric. Okay, now I want to sew a honeycomb stitch. And that stitch is in blue, so I'm going to come back up to my stitch length dial and I'm going to line it up so that I see the blue S1, so blue and blue. Now I'm going to sew the honeycomb stitch. Bring down the presser foot lifter and begin sewing.
turn the hand wheel so that the needle's in the highest position, lift your presser foot lifter, and trim the thread. Lastly, I want to sew this feather stitch in red. So just like each of the other times, I'm going to come back up to stitch length, move it again so that it lines up with the S2 in red, red and red, and it's time to sew the feather stitch. Put the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot lifter, and begin again. Turn the hand wheel again so that the needle is in the highest position, lift the presser foot lifter, and trim the thread tail. And there we have three decorative stitches, all on the same point on the stitch selector dial, but with varying stitch length settings. Now I want to go over how to do a zigzag stitch, because a zigzag stitch is very versatile and can be used in a wide array of applications. So I'm going to go back to my stitch selector dial and move it to this area where there's only this gray zigzag that goes from little to big. So I'm gonna go on the narrow side and because it's a gray stitch, I need to have my stitch length dial in the gray area and let's sew it at the number two and see how that looks. Lower your presser foot and begin sewing. Turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle's in the highest position. Raise the presser foot lifter. Trim the thread. And there we have a narrow zigzag. So I'm going to make the stitch length a four instead of a two, so I've increased it. And let's do that all again and see how it looks now. Turn the hand wheel, needle in the highest position, raise the presser foot lifter and trim the thread. And there we see that we have a narrow zigzag at two different lengths, and check out how different those stitches look. So let's change it up a little more. Let's make it a wider zigzag by moving my stitch selector dial to the larger area. And let's bring that stitch length back to two. Turn that hand wheel towards you so the needle's in the highest position. Raise your presser foot lifter, trim the thread. And now I want to increase the stitch length on that to a four. Let's see how that looks. Turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle's in the highest position. Raise the presser foot lifter, trim the threads. And here we see that by adjusting the width and length of the zigzag stitch, we have a bunch of different looking stitches, but all zigzag. One last thing I want to point out regarding decorative stitches is the tension dial up at the top of the machine. Because you might be using different threads, you might want to fine tune the look of your stitch. And you can do that by moving the style. You can move it down or up. And if you'll notice from three to five, there's this line. So that kind of signifies your default zone. So for most of your sewing, you will be from three to five. Well, let's make a buttonhole. Before we sew our buttonhole, we need to mark how long we want it. So I have my button on my fabric. I'm going to hold it in place and make a mark on the top and the bottom. So that's how long it needs to be. And then I'm going to take a ruler and make a straight line in between. 
and it's going to look like a capital I. Now we're ready to make the buttonhole. It is super easy to make buttonholes on this machine. So first, to do that, let's remove the all-purpose foot by moving it towards you and attach the buttonhole foot, that white foot with the letter B on it. Make sure the red marks are towards the left. Take the metal prongs and push away from you and it goes in. Now we need to adjust the settings on the machine. To sew out a buttonhole, I need to go to my stitch selector dial and move it to the buttonhole area. I'm going to stitch out number one and you'll also see two and four in the same spot and number three. So we're gonna do step one right here and go up to the stitch length dial and move it to this buttonhole zone. And this zone allows me to adjust how far apart or how close together the stitches are based on how I want the buttonhole to look on my fabric. So if you have it in the left part of the zone, the stitches are a little further apart. The further you go to the right, the closer they are together. Now we're ready to stitch it out. I'm going to line up my letter I so that it's in the center of my buttonhole foot. And I wanna make sure that the bottom of my eye is lined up in this hole so I can see it. Bring down your presser foot and begin sewing. Okay, you will sew back until you hit the top part of your letter I. Make sure the needle's in the highest position. And go back to your stitch selector dial and move it so that you see the number two of your buttonhole. And then you will stitch that for about six to eight stitches. Turn the hand wheel towards you again so that the needle's in the highest position. And go to your stitch selector dial and turn it so that it is on step three of the buttonhole. And begin sewing. Stop sewing once you've gone back to the bottom of your eye. Turn the hand wheel towards you so that the needle's in the highest position. And turn the stitch selector dial back to the number four. And sew for about six to eight stitches. Turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle is in the highest position. Raise your presser foot lifter. And here's your buttonhole. You can go ahead and clip the thread from the beginning, but once we trim our threads, the thread that we ended with, what you'll want to do is get a hand sewing needle and just bring it to the back and tie it off. Now I just pulled the thread from the front to the back with that hand sewing needle, like I said, and tied it off. And now we are ready to open up the buttonhole. I'm going to take a pin and put it through the top And I put this here so that it will stop my seam ripper before I can cut through any of these threads. In your accessory tray, you have a seam ripper, which also can be used to open buttonholes. I'm going to insert my seam ripper at the bottom and then bring it along the top until I hit my pin. I can now remove my pin and you have a buttonhole. From time to time, you'll need to change the needle on your machine depending on what kind of fabric you're sewing. The most common needles you'll find are regular point needles and ballpoint needles. Regular point needles are used for fabrics such as silk, wool, or quilting cotton, any fabrics that don't stretch. And your ballpoint needles are used for your stretchy fabric like swimsuit knits, t-shirt knits, and sweatshirt knits. The needles come in different sizes such as lightweight, medium weight, and heavy weight. Now that you've picked a new needle, it's time to change the needle. So I'm going to remove the presser foot that's on the machine just to make it a little easier. And it will probably be helpful to maybe put like a piece of paper on top of your needle plate just to make sure you don't accidentally drop the needle into the hole. I'm going to grab my needle to secure it 
and take this L-shaped screwdriver that came in the accessory kit and I'm going to turn the screw next to the needle towards me to loosen it and then take it out of the machine. Now I can throw it away. Then take the new needle with a flat side to the back, insert it until it won't go any higher and move the screw away from you to tighten it. And there you are. You have mastered the art of changing your needle. And that's our video. Thanks for watching. For more information, please check out the Singer website. Happy sewing!